Hey everyone, welcome to week three of our Equip You series of helping you all make small group discipleship a reality in your Christian walk. Small groups, and specifically the discipleship relationships that come out of them, are critical not only to our success as a church, but to your growth in your relationship with Jesus Christ. We know that the Christian walk was and is meant to be lived together, and my hope is that this time continues to foster just that. This week we'll be talking about the importance of staying spiritually fit. In this season of coronavirus, we have seen the suspension and in many cases cancellation of sports leagues such as the MLB, NFL, NBA, and many other sports leagues. What do you think the players were doing in the months of quarantine? Do you think they were sitting on their couches, eating potato chips, and maybe picking up a bat or ball once a week to sharpen their skills? No, of course they weren't. Well, maybe the Reds were. I'm recording this after their series lost to the Braves. No, these athletes, including the Reds, were spending hours on their own, each day staying fit, improving their skills, and spending time doing the things they loved and felt were important in their lives. Today, many Christians are not able to function in ministry the same way they were before the virus. Some are not able to meet at all, and many, including us, have had to change the way we do ministry. Let me ask you a difficult question. Do you think that Many Christians in America were staying spiritually fit through the last few months. When you look at your social media of people who claim to be followers of Christ, do you see the fruits of that? I I don't know about you, but when I was on social media, I saw more conspiracy theories, political disciples, and general anger than I saw people using their platforms to promote Christ-likeness. Seriously, take a second to think about how often you saw gentleness, meekness, patience, kindness, long-suffering, and self-control during this pandemic. And let me put something else difficult on the table for us. During the last six months, many of the structures and circumstances that have kept us spiritually fit or even spiritually stable have been taken from us. What we love and what we actually care about will be shown through the way we live when these structures are taken away from us. If we love and put our hope in sports or politics or even our relationships, these are the things we'll be willing to abandon Christ and His church for. Just like the athletes who practiced and worked out every day to stay fit for their sport, we need to take the time each day, week, month and year to stay spiritually fit. The question is, how do we stay spiritually fit? Well, luckily God's Word gives us an example of how to do just that. Let's take a look at the book of Philippians. And while you're turning there, I want to remind us of what the goal is in spiritual fitness, and that is godliness. We must remember that our goal is to look like and act like Jesus by being men and women after God's own heart. And now that you've turned to the book of Philippians, let's take a look at chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you, both to will and work for his good pleasure. Now let's take this verse apart. Essentially what Paul is saying is that when we are working out our salvation with fear and trembling, our desires, our will, what we want will be what God wants, what his desires are, and what his will is. Secondly, our actions will be driven not by blind or obedience or as a measure of how spiritually mature we are, but as an outgrowth of who we are. And this is accomplished through the pursuit of godliness in our lives, putting off sin and putting on righteousness. As the Puritan John Owen said, Do you mortify? Do you make it your daily work? Be always at it whilst you live. Cease not a day from this. Be killing sin or it will be killing you. So the question is, how do I produce godliness? Well, there are many ways to do this, but I want to focus on three different categories. The first category is through people. God puts people into our lives for a reason, and that that means that the Christian life was meant to be lived together. Remember in week one when Brian talked about the three different discipleship relationships, the Paul, Barnabas, and Timothy relationships? We should be seeking those three different categories of relationships out in our own local church. For you, it's your family here at Tri-County Baptist Church. And take a second to think about if you have those relationships in your church family or not. If you do, great, fantastic, keep going. But if you don't, why not? What could possibly be more important than living out what Jesus has commissioned us to do in Matthew 28, 19? 
Why we not take advantage of, but also be the inheritance for other people at TCBC? The second category through which we produce godliness is our circumstances. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let that steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Jesus talks about the beautiful inheritance we have in him and in our church family in Mark 10, 29 and 30. But he also says our inheritance comes with persecutions. We cannot love the God of this world and this world at the same time. We cannot have two masters because we will come to hate one and love the other. If friendship with God is enmity with the world, then wouldn't friendship with the world be enmity with God? Following Christ means that we may lose many temporal things. They may be relationships, children, hobby, desires, or even possessions. But no matter what we lose, we gain back a hundred times that in spiritual children, our church family, new desires, and yes, the shared resources of our church family. In the midst of trials, we remember that all things work for good for those who love the Lord. And remember that good is God's glory because His glory is our good. Finally, the last category is through spiritual disciplines. What are spiritual disciplines, you may ask? Well, let's take a look at the life of Jesus to see what he did to grow his spiritual walk with the Father. First, Jesus prayed. And many times and in many ways, he did this to constantly commune with his Father and focus his thoughts on what he was sent on this earth to do, to accomplish the will of his Father. Our prayer life is meant to do the same thing. We come with our hearts as an offering to God, seeking to align our will with His. We speak the truth about God in our prayers to remind us of who He is and what He has done. Secondly, Jesus spent alone time with the Father. There were times Jesus purposely separated from those around Him, got rid of all the distractions so that He could commune with the Father. Let me encourage you to do just that. One day after work this week, or even after, after you put the kids to sleep, put your phone down, take a walk by yourself. It could be around your neighborhood, a park, or even in your own backyard. Take that time to reflect and talk out loud and remind yourself of who God is, what He has called you to do, and pour your heart out to Him. Third, Jesus fasted. In our particular culture, this is not something that we do very often, but Jesus did not fast in vain. Fasting shows our own weakness, irritability, and while we are fasting, we are constantly reminded as to why we are fasting. If we fast for the purpose of focusing on our Heavenly Fathers, our bodies will work with us to keep reminding us of why we are doing that. Next, Jesus revered and adored God. Jesus' knowledge and depth and love for His Father is something we cannot achieve, but something that we should strive for. And how we come to revere and adore God is by knowing Him. Taking the time each day to search His Word helps us know Him more. And the more we know Him, the more we love Him. Fifth, Jesus shared the good news. Jesus called Himself the way, the truth, and the life, and no one came to the Father but through Him. It is necessary to proclaim that same truth to ourselves, our spouses, our children, our neighbors, and our church family. The good news of the gospel of Jesus is the linchpin of our faith. It is why we as decrepit, undeserving, and broken sinners can have hope. If we love those around us, our spouses, children, and grandchildren, and our community, we will tell them that same good news, not just through the way we live, but as Jesus did, directly and with bold speech. Finally, Jesus quoted God's word from memory. What was Jesus' greatest test? Probably when he was tempted by Satan in the desert for 40 days. He did what Moses and Adam could not do. He resisted temptation. And how did he do this? He quoted God's word from memory. Unlike Jesus, we have no good in us. There is no part of us that is good. The only good that resides in us is the Holy Spirit. And when we are tempted to sin, only the word of, only, it is only the word of God that we can truly count on. Our own wisdom and discernment will fail us. And that is why it's so important for us to know the word of God so deeply we can quote it from memory. This practice should not have died with Awana. It should continue even to today. Now, before we end, I want us to I want to remind us that God has called us to spiritual fitness by putting on godliness in our lives. What we do through people, circumstances, and spiritual disciplines, and how we interact with that in our daily lives. Let our lives be 
a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our spiritual service. So before you begin your discussion time, let's end this in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we've got to have together. Let us take the truth that has been spoken here, the truth that is in your word, where we are supposed to be pursuing godliness by putting off sin and putting on righteousness, and let that, let that reverberate through our lives. Let us use the people, the circumstances, and the spiritual disciplines to help drive us towards not only actions, but ultimately a heart that seeks after you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.